Welcome back to our series where we are talking um, agreements in Business Central. We're talking uh, blanket POs. We're talking demand forecasts. We're also going to touch to the idea of the planning worksheets and demand planning and how these document implicates demand. So let's go to actions. We can see blanket purchase order here underneath your document here. Okay. A uh, second thing for us. All right, we can turn around um, and see related documents, blanket orders, and down on my fact box, if you scroll down, you'll see blanket orders just here, and I've gone and created one earlier. So we're going to use order 1002, and if I scroll down, I can see here three lines, and here is an example of two different types of uses of a blanket order number one we split it into three lines pretty simple and when i get to the point where i want to actually receive something i would say i want to receive this uh on the 15th of the first 15th of the second 15th of the third and it gives us an ability here to then show that this product is expected on these dates and now i can actually i could raise a purchase order off this straight off the line so one of the things you will want is to link into the order or invoices and then post the receipts once things move along the chain of transactions so you can use your line level menu here to make it functional so don't forget that let's actually start off by bringing in the first concept is to use a line per month and from here i'm just going to hit make order create a blanket order yes uh, and uh, 17 is our order number. I can go unposted orders, and here we are. Here's the line. I can open the document, and here's my purchase order. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, uh, at this stage, we have on order 30 units, okay? And to update the blanket order, we have to actually act it on this, and so I'm going to... I'm going to put an example invoice number. I'm going to post this, receive an invoice. Now, this demo, the main location does not require warehousing. And so we're going to use the document here to receive. We're going to hit that off and the invoice is created. We're going to go back to our blanket purchase order and I can see the quantity received, quantity invoiced. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So that's one way we could treat this as I'm going to use a line per month. The other way is we could just talk uh, a large volume of supply like this. We could say, I want to, let's use another example widget item, and I'm going to say that's 6,000, and I'm going to use an Athens desk for 1,000. And so another way to use this, let's pretend that we're not naming the lines. We're just agreeing to a bulk volume with our distributor. Okay. And now I'm talking about what I'm actually receiving, what I need in my warehouse right now. And I needed, uh, for example, today. So I'm just going to put today's date. Uh, T, T, T. There we go. And the quantity to receive, I need a thousand of this unit, 500 and 550. And so the quantity to receive, I can draw down from the line. I can make an order. Here's my new order from a blanket order. I can go and see the order, show the document, and my example purchase order is raised here. Okay, you can see my pricing discounts have kicked in from previous tutorials. I can take this and just post uh, and receive. So I'm going to receive it. And let's just say that I had only been partially invoiced for some of it. So 500, 350, 250. And I can post and invoice what I've been invoiced for. And I need an invoice number. So let's just put that there. So let's post an invoice. And so I've received... I've ordered a certain amount, I received a certain amount, and I've been invoiced for a different amount. But back on the blanket order, now this actually carries up to the blanket. We can actually see what's on order, what's yet to be received. Okay, we can see the quantity received and 
the quantity that's actually invoiced. So pretty cool. Like the blanket purchase order can be useful. You can use this to turn around and help drive, uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 the agreement framework for your business. Now, if I go into a demand planner, planning worksheets, and in here, I want to actually now understand the implication. So I'm going to just run a, a plan on this item. Now, before I go too far, let's go and have a look. Let's have a look at this item. And at the moment, it's replenishment is purchase. It's Frix reorder quantity. And at this stage, I've already got it set to, I need to order 10. When I get below 10, order 10 units. So I might, might bring this back to two, uh, let's say to five and five. Okay. And so that way you can see this in the plan. So uh, I'm not filtered by location. I'm saying from and to, let's hit OK. We're running the planner. And I can see here now five that my planning system wants. I need to get in stock. I need five because the, the planning settings on the item is actually saying we will reorder five units. Okay. I've actually got a safety stock setting which says give me two units. So the plan is working to expectation, but you'll notice here is nothing to do with the blanket order is appearing. With exception to this, you can expose this column. You can say a blanket order exists. I can click on it and it shows me I need these widgets delivered by these dates. So I could say, oh, that's a problem. I need 5,000. So we've got, we've got to allow for that. And I can go order 5,000 units right and from there we can actually then go and carry out action messages so we go home carry out action message and raise the purchase order and not production sorry purchase order just here so the planning worksheets does allow for us to know that we had an agreement um, but it really does rely on your users looking into it it doesn't actually affect demand so that's where we're going to talk about the implication of demand using demand forecasts in our next tutorial. See you there.